Hi, this is Rich Lavens of Eurotherm by Watlow, and I had a question today on how do you download the historical record, you know, the recordings from a Nanodac onto a USB card. So we're going to show you that. So on the back, there is always a USB port, and we're going to plug in a card here. Um, regarding that card, it has to be 8 gigabytes or less. If you use something larger than 8 gigabytes, it's not going to work. So 8 gig or less. And then to do the archive, we have our page key, our enter, and our down and up buttons. We're going to hit the page key, and we're going to log in. So in here, in the operator mode on a Nanodac, you cannot do the demand archive. So I'm going to show you how to log into the engineer mode, but then I'm also going to show you how to set up a supervisor level, and I'll explain that in a minute in iTools. So anyway, we are going to log into engineer, hit enter again, and every Nanodac has its own unique password, so I'm going to enter mine. So once you enter it, hit the page key, accept, yes, no, or cancel, we're going to say yes. So, the one thing about the configuration level is when you're in configuration, the controller does not control the process anymore. The outputs are locked down or locked out as a safety. That's why when we come back to iTools, I'm going to show you how to set up a uh, supervisor level as well. So anyway, we're here, we're going to hit the page key, and we're going to go back to the home menu. And now you can see down toward the bottom, there's something that says Demand Archive. So we're going to hit the enter key and we want to archive to the USB yep. and what do we want to archive? So when we get to that, we're going to hit the enter key again and you have some choices. We can do the last hour, the last day, the last week, so forth. So just for the, um, for the training video and uh, time, I'm going to go to, let's just do the last hour. So you can see down here, it is now transferring the information out of the Nanodac onto that card. Um, depending on how much information you're putting on that card, it can take uh, a few seconds to a few minutes. So we'll just kind of sit tight here and let that transfer. And um, that probably took, well, 30 seconds. So now you can see it's complete. We can go ahead. And again, in this case, we're in configuration, so we, <laughs> we want to make sure we log out or else the controller is not going to control. So we can do the same thing by setting up a supervisor level. Um, in the supervisor level, you could do the demand archive, but the controller will continue to control the process. So let's hop over to uh, iTools, and I'll show you how to set that. All right, so here we are at my PC. I've connected the Nanodac to my PC using the uh, configuration cable or CPI clip. You could also do the same thing using uh, Ethernet, but uh, first we'll open up iTools here. iTools is a free download from the Eurotherm.com website or the Watlow.com website. Um, here's iTools, and we want to select iTools Engineering Studio. So we're going to come up here to this scan button. We're going to hit scan. And again, if you're using Ethernet, you could uh, use the top button, but we're going to use the CPI clip, also called configuration cable. So we're going to select the fourth choice and we're going to hit OK. If you're using the CPI clip slash configuration cable, um, the USB will power up the instrument enough to get it into iTools, but you normally would not want to also apply uh, supply power. So if, you're, if your Nanodax 24 volt or 120 volt power, you want to make sure you uh, don't have that plugged in because the USB is going to supply the, uh, the voltage. So anyway, up here in the upper left-hand corner, uh, you will see two arrows. If you see the two arrows... Uh, it means the controller is syncing with the software. You can't do anything with that until you see this, uh, a little box uh, representing the controller, the COM port you're connected to, and then the instrument, so Nanodac.
So a um, couple different ways to do this, but uh, I'll show you probably the easiest way. So up here is your access button. So we're going to click access and it's going to say, do you really want to do this? I'm paraphrasing. So yeah. And again, you're going to need to know the password. So in my case, I'm going to enter it. And you can see that access button has now got a black wrench with a yellow background. Uh, so we are in access mode, configuration mode, engineering mode, whatever you want to call it. Uh, again, just like before, though, when you're in that engineering mode, if you're hooked up live through Ethernet uh, or, or you have the NANODAC controlling the process, when you're in engineering mode, it stops controlling the process. So let's go to our Parameter Explorer button. And down here we have various folders on the left hand side but we want to pick the instrument uh, tab make this a bit bigger go to security and when you go to security there's your engineering passphrase and your supervisor passphrase if you recall my instrument did not have a supervisor level in it well that's pretty easy to set up all you really need to do is come up here hit these three little dots and give it a supervisor password. So let's try 50 and 50, and we can show that if we want and hit OK. So reason it didn't like that is the Nanodac has a minimum password requirement. So if you try to enter something it doesn't like, it will fight you a bit. So let's redo that, and we will just unshow that. So this time, I'm going to enter a password that it likes. So you've done that. And it likes that. So now we have a supervisor password in there. Don't forget to log out. So we're going to log out of that thing. Uh, and really, now that I have the supervisor pass level, we're going to go back to the instrument. I'll show you where that's at, and we'll do another demand archive, and we should be good to go. And again, log out. So well, it is unpowered, and that's because I still have the CPI clip hooked into it. So we are going to disconnect that. And we're going to power this thing up. So it takes a few seconds to boot up here. So we will be patient. Okay, we are rebooted here. So now we're gonna redo this same procedure. So we are going to hit the page key and we're gonna log in. We're going to hit the enter button. Now when I log in, there's the supervisor level we just set up. So I'm going to enter that. And it's going to ask me for the password I used. So in my case, Enter that, hit the page key. Do you want to accept? Yes. Now I'm in the supervisor menu. So in supervisor, the demand archive now shows up, but the controller is still controlling the process. So we can plug this in again and hit demand archive. Again, we're going to go to the USB. We're going to archive, hit enter, and we'll bring it up to date or all or whatever. So we're just going to do again the last hour. And again, we're transferring. So um, we'll let that finish up. And the last thing you want to do is, depending on you know your company, what you want to uh, do from a security standpoint. Um, again, we are controlling the process in the supervisor level. 
Um, there is a little more access to parameters in the supervisor level, so we may want to go ahead and just log back to level one. So we'll do that when it's done transferring. And we are complete, so let's uh, hit our page key here again. We're going to go back to log out, click that, and now we're back to level one. As you can see, the demand archive doesn't show up, and now the controller uh, is back to basically, you know, a normal run mode. Hope you find this helpful, but uh, drop us an email or give us a call if we can answer any questions. Thank you.